again and welcome back to English Today. And this is DVD 19 and the second DVD of your advanced level. And in this DVD, we'll start with another two episodes of our story, That's Life. And then after, we'll look at our special TV programs. There'll be a discussion about winning the lottery. And then in the cookery section, we'll learn how to make preserves. To follow, in the grammar section, we'll look at the language we use for making arrangements with people. And then we'll study some special question forms. So, I hope you have fun. Home sweet home. I would have preferred to stay away just a little bit longer. Mm. Oh my God, look at the mess. Look at this place and look at the dust. Oh, I don't even know where I'm going to begin. Oh. Calm down, Anne. One thing at a time. Oh. Let's just have a look at the post to start with. Electricity bill, heating bill, telephone bill. I can't believe there are only bills to pay. I'll open them later. Coming home from holidays, stressful enough as it is. Mm. Oh, here's a letter from Sharon. Mm. Let's see what she has to say. Mm, I'll tidy up later. Dear Anne, I would have preferred to say goodbye in person, but you had already left for your trip to Italy. Speaking of which, did you enjoy yourself? Unfortunately, things between me and Jack just haven't worked out. Maybe we rushed everything. Maybe memories with Peter were still too fresh. I don't know. Anyway, living together just became impossible. After thinking about things long and hard, I decided to accept my boss's offer to transfer to Amsterdam to take charge of the new museum opening. It's a great city. In any case, I need time to get my life in order and... Well, I hope everything's fine with you. Don't move. Oh, don't hurt me. There, you'll find all my money there. Just, just take it and leave. Relax, please. Anne. It's me, Jack. Oh, Jack. <laughs> Jack. Are you crazy? You scared me half to death. And, uh, how did you get in here? Well, I might be living next door, but I still have these. So I can surprise you from time to time. Jack, you'll never change. I was reading a letter from Sharon explaining why she left. If you don't mind, Anne, I'd, I'd rather not talk about that. Uh, what about you and your Mr. Perfection, Nick? How are you? Well, I realized that things weren't all as perfect as he wanted me to believe and in any case if you don't mind I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Let bygones be bygones. But what about a drink to celebrate your homecoming? Mm, no Jack. I've just arrived and I need to unpack and just take a look at the place. It's a disaster area. <laughs> no the first thing I want to do is get things tidied up. Where did you get this? Isn't it marvelous? My grandmother gave it to me. It's fantastic. Well, if you want to get tidied up, you'd better start right away. It'll take you a month to clean this. I know. <laughs> and you say I'll never change. Anne, do you ever think about anything besides cleaning? Hmm? No, guys. You should get engaged to a Hoover. Mm. Anyway, no excuses. Come on, go, get ready. Can you manage to be ready by 7? <laughs> Oh, 
and I'm here with Jack now. He says hello. Yeah, she says hello. I'm so happy. You know, Jack insisted on cleaning the whole house straight away. Hmm? What? What telegram? No, I haven't received anything. What? But tonight? You should have given me some advance notice. Okay. Yes. Fine. I'll see you at the airport at nine. What do you mean at the airport? What did Alice have to say? She's arriving tonight at nine o'clock. For good. And she's bringing a surprise. Wow. Well, that is good news. What, together again? All for one, one for all. Isn't that great, Anne? Yep. Fantastic. What's the matter? Why the sad face? Nothing. What? But it's just that I was just thinking about the poor house. I don't even want to start to imagine what a mess I'm going to have in here with you two. Oh! Hello and welcome back to your live English language TV program. Did you notice in that episode that Jack was trying to invite Anne for a drink and he was using the language of making arrangements? Well, that's what I want to study with you now in this lesson. And to do that, I want to use the telephone. Now, listen carefully to the conversation that I have, okay? Oh. Miracles can happen. Hello. Oh, hi, Jane. How are you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Very well. Well, lots of work at the moment, actually. Yes, I know. I look forward to the weekend, too, just to relax a bit. And how about you? Yeah? Oh, what's going on? Oh, that sounds interesting. When? Friday. Oh, no, not Friday. I've got a concert. Yeah, I got a ticket to a concert on Friday. I can't make it. Well, um, what about Saturday? Um, what are you up to on Saturday? Oh, really? Sounds interesting. Anyone I know? Oh, really? I haven't seen him for ages. Yes, I'd love to. Okay, well, what sort of time? Yeah, all right. Well, if you want, I can give you a lift. Yeah? Let's say I'll pick you up at about eight-ish. Great. Oh, by the way, um, what type of clothes? Is it, is it posh? Is it casual? Fine. All right, great, great, great. Well, I really look forward to it. All right, then. Good. See you then. All right, then. Bye. Now... Did you notice that was a nice invitation, that? I was using certain phrases which are very common in English when we are making arrangements. And that's what I'd like to look with you now on the screen. All right? Making arrangements. So, first, suggesting an appointment. Now, there are various things we can say in English to suggest an appointment. For example, what are you up to? on Friday. Now that's unusual. The verb is to be up to. What are you up to on Friday? So that's a colloquial expression and it means just simply what are you doing? What are you up to on Friday? Other expressions, this, this you already know we've learnt it. How about or what about going to the cinema? Remember those? So they are informal. Another possibility is, could you manage? Could you manage a meeting on Friday? This is a bit more formal. Manage means organize. It's a word we use very often. Okay? Could you manage a meeting on Friday? 
Another possibility is, do you think we could meet up? Do you think we could meet up, which means get together? And also, I wonder if we could go, for example, I wonder if we could go to a show together. I wonder. So, wonder is a word which we use, and it's talking about thinking something over. All right? So, those are different ways of suggesting an appointment. Now, usually, when somebody suggests an appointment, you have to look in your diary. Now, remember, yeah, we say diary in English. We don't say an agenda. Okay? So, you look in your diary to see what your, your availability is. And you can say, for example, on the phone, you say, just a minute, I'll have a look. I'll have a look in my diary. Or you could say, let me just look in my diary. Two very common expressions. Now remember, alternative words for diary are an organizer, or a day planner. These are words which are often used. Day planner and organizer. All right? Good. Now we have to talk about a time. So you could ask, are you free at 8 o'clock, for example? Or could you manage, you notice manage again, organize. Could you manage Tuesday? Or would Friday at 5 suit you. Now look at the spelling of that. S-U-I-T. We don't say suit. We say suit. And suit is very common. It means to be convenient. So would Friday at five suit you? Another very common one is could you make it? Could you make it on Monday? Which means could you organize yourself? Could you make it on Monday, or another possibility is when would you be available? Available, more formal, when would you be available? All right, great. So now, we've talked about the time. If you want to reject, say no to a suggestion and an arrangement, these are the possibilities. You can say, I'm sorry, I'm booked up on Friday. Now, booked up means that your agenda is full, okay? So I'm booked up, my agenda is full, my diary is full, my day planner is full, okay? So, you can also say, I'm afraid I'm busy on Friday. I'm afraid. Now, I'm afraid means unfortunately. It's the same meaning. Unfortunately, I'm busy on Friday. All right? Um, or, unfortunately, I can't make it, which is what we've used before. Great. Now, if you want to accept the suggestion, you can say, I'd love to, which is something we learned in socializing. I'd love to, or that would be great. That would be great. That would be great. And the last thing is to confirm the arrangement. So here you can say, fine, so that's Wednesday at 7 o'clock in your office. Notice we say, so that's Wednesday at 7 o'clock in your office. So that's. Good, I'll see you later then is less formal. And more formal, I look forward to seeing you on Friday. Remember, we've learned that expression too. I look forward to seeing you on Friday. Very common. All right, so that's all the language of making arrangements. And I look forward to seeing you again in our next lesson. So until then, goodbye. I just don't understand, Alice. Why did you leave the job you were doing with your father? Had you started arguing again? No, well, 
Not exactly. You know, working with my father is very difficult. We just have a completely different artistic view of things. And you know how I am. After a bit, I just get bored of doing the same things. I need new horizons. Well, what's wrong with working on a set? Wasn't it uh, satisfying enough? Uh, sure, of course. You know, in the long run, even the most satisfying things can get boring. And, of course, I met Edward. <laughs> By the way, Edward is a Scorpio. Ooh, that's really interesting. Have you noticed what a magnetic look he has about him? Well, it's kind of hard to see his eyes from behind that camera. I wonder if he ever puts it down. <laughs> Does he take it to bed with him? Stop! No, no. It's not going to work like that. You guys aren't acting naturally at all. You're too stiff. You look like statues. What we need here is expression, involvement, passion. Come on, let's do another take of that last scene. Which scene makes us look stiff? <laughs> We're simply talking here, Edward. <laughs> That's what I mean. Do it well. Let your inner self flow. Express your fears. Your hidden desires. You, and Yes, you. You are in love with Jack, aren't you? Don't be afraid. Show your true feelings. Show him what you are capable of. Well, besides the fact that I'm, I'm not in love with Jack anymore. Well, who told you, anyway? Okay, okay, let's take five. Maybe it's better if I leave you alone. Uh, excuse me, Alice. Could you tell me where I can watch this material in peace and quiet? Um, go on into my room, Edward. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, Alice. Could you tell me what the hell you said to him? Oh, just the truth. When Edward told me about his love of reality shows, I jokingly told him he had to meet you guys because life in this house was more exciting than a soap opera. He asked me why and I told him everything. Okay, what exactly do you mean by everything? Well, about you and Peter and how you fought over Sharon and about Anne's unrequited love for you and how she discovered your relationship. In other words, all the emotional goings-on of recent. Oh my God, Alice. What got into you? This is so embarrassing. You know damn well I'm reserved about these things. What am I supposed to do now? Just be yourself. There's nothing easier, is there? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter for you, that's for sure. <laughs> We're the ones that end up looking ridiculous. Just for the record, what is Edward planning to do with all of this interesting material? What does he do for a living? Edward is a director. A great director. <laughs> and as far as your other question is concerned, that's a surprise. I can't say anything yet. At any rate, you'll find out soon. Mm. My God, Alice. Your surprises are starting to trouble me. <laughs> we like surprises, don't we? Now, questions. In this lesson, I want to do some revision of questions, and I want to do a quiz with you. And I want to ask you some special questions, those unusual questions in English. And I want you to try and find the correct answer by understanding the real meaning of the question. Let me give you an example. If I ask you, What's he like? What's he like? What answer would you give me? What's he like?
You remember? Okay, it's not the verb to like, like to like and dislike. What he like is asking about the general impression of a person. So, what's he like? An answer could be, he's lovely, he's very nice, he's kind, he's generous. All right? So that's the quiz. Are you ready? Let's move on. Now, question, what does he look like? What does he look like? Remember that? Yeah, look like is for physical appearance. So an answer could be, well, he's tall, dark, and handsome. Classic. All right, so what does he look like? Physical appearance. Next. How is he? Answer. How is he? Now that's a bit confusing because it is only asking about somebody's health. Like, how are you? So how is he? He's fine. Great. Okay, he's fine. Next one. What does he do for a living? What does he do for a living? The answer? Okay, he's a doctor. He's an engineer. So that question is asking about professions. What does he do for a living? Very good. Next one. These. What's the matter? What's wrong? What's up? Okay. Yeah, there are here. There are many, many possibilities. Because the question means what's the problem? So what's the matter? What's wrong? What's up? You can say, I can't find my phone. All right. Good. Next one. This one, not so easy. Try and answer this. What's it about? What's it about? Yeah, okay, now we're asking about the content. It could be a book, it could be a film, for example. What's it about? An answer could be, well, it's a love story. It's about two people who fall in love and then blah, 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 blah. All right, so what's it about? Content. Next one, which way do we go? Answer, which way do we go? Yeah, good. It's for giving directions. So you can say, well, you go right, then you turn left, and then you carry straight on. So which way do we go giving directions? Fine. Next one, this one. What size do you take? What size do you take? Yeah. Now, we're talking about clothes. We're talking about shoes, for example. We don't say what number do you take, but what size. So you could say, for example, I take size 12 or I take size 42. All right? So what size do you take? Great. Next one. How long does it take? How long does it take or how long is it going to last? One hour, 15 minutes, all right? So how long does it take? How long is it going to last? Is for a length of an activity. How long does it last? Strange that, yeah? Next one. Hmm, this is difficult. Do you know this? If I say to you, well, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Huh, do you know that? It's very, very, very familiar language. Reckon is the same in English as what do you think? What do you reckon? What do you think? Good. Next one. Uh, what's it made of? What's it made of? If I show you this. What's it made of? Plastic. Right. So what's it made of is for the substance. Wood, plastic, paper, etc. All right. Okay, this one here. How do you want your steak done? How do you want your steak done? Three possibilities in the answer. Okay, you can say, well done, medium, or rare. 
I want my steak rare, R-A-R-E, which is like bloody, all right? And the last one, do you know this? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, exactly. You're supposed to go to bed now. Now, this is asking for advice. It's like saying, what should I do? It's exactly the same meaning. Great. Now, you're very good, you see. With every lesson, you learn more and more, and we're really making progress. So, keep practicing, and I'll see you again in the next lesson. So, take care. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Talk, the evening discussion program with our two commentators, Tom and Marie. Good evening everyone. Good evening. What have you got in your hand, Tom? Well, um, I bought a lottery ticket on my way here to the studio. I thought I'd try my luck. You know, the first prize is 20 million pounds at the moment. Ooh, quite a penny or two. And what would you do if you won 20 million pounds? Hmm, well, I think the first thing I would do would be to set off to the Caribbean to veg out for a couple of weeks, just to give myself time to think about what to do next. Any ideas at all? Well, I'd certainly want to have a good time just after winning anyway, but I wouldn't fritter away all the money on parties and things. Sounds sensible. And you, Marie, if you won 20 million pounds, what would you do? What I'd love to do is start up my own business. I wouldn't want to stop working altogether, but I'd really want to be my own boss for a change. Oh, what sort of business would you get into? I think I'd buy a big country house and convert it into a hotel. Not too big a place, I guess. I might not have enough money. <laughs> would you give some of your winnings away? But, uh, of course. I'd give some to my relatives, my, my sister anyway, and my mum and dad too. I, I don't know about the others. Um, I certainly wouldn't skimp on Christmas presents anymore. Well, I'd donate some to charities, some to AIDS charities that work in Africa, um, and some to cancer research. I'd invest some of it pretty soon after winning to make sure I didn't spend it all. Hmm. Do you think all that money would bring any problems? Well, I've heard you get a lot of letters from people begging for money. I wouldn't be too keen on that. Uh, I guess you may suddenly find yourself surrounded by lots of new friends, or some old ones may show up again too. Am I being too cynical? No, Tom. <laughs> I think you're right. And lots of people would try to give you advice on how to invest the money. You'd have to be really careful about who you trusted. Winning huge amounts of money can destroy people's lives if they can't handle the changes all that money brings. That's true. And aren't state lotteries just another form of taxation? An unfair hidden form of taxation. Poorer people spend lots of money buying tickets with very little chance of winning. I don't think government should be involved in selling dreams through lotteries. Well, oh, maybe you're right, Eric. Lotteries sell illusions. But tonight, I want a dream. <laughs> okay, Tom, keep on dreaming them. Good luck for the draw. And goodbye to you and Marie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Would you like to win 20 million pounds? Well, think about it. And we'll see you again next time for another discussion of Let's Talk. Well, what would you do with 20 million pounds? Would you set off for the Caribbean, like Tom? We say, set off for, a destination. This means to start a journey. He would veg out for a few weeks to think. To veg out means to relax completely. It's an informal expression. It would be a shame to fritter away the money. To fritter away means to waste. If you fritter away money, you spend it on useless things. Would you keep on working? 
To keep on doing something means to continue doing something. So, keep on working means continue working. Or, would you stop working altogether? If you stop doing something altogether, it means you stop completely. I would start up my own business like Marie. To start up means to create. To start up a business means you create a new business. I'd like to be my own boss. This means work for myself. Are you your own boss or do you work for someone? Would you like to start up a business? What would you get into? To get into something means become involved in something. I'd probably start up a record shop. I'd like to get into the music business. I'd probably donate some money to charity. Donate to charity means give to charity. Would you donate any of your winnings? Your winnings is the money you win. I guess though unexpected people may show up if you suddenly won so much money. To show up means to arrive. And as Marie said, lots of people may start begging for money. When you beg for something, you ask for it desperately. Perhaps I'll try my luck and buy a ticket too. See you next week, or if you don't see me, then it means I've won. Bye. Good morning from Cooking Today. Here we are with Lisa French, our expert homemaker. How are you, Lisa? I'm fine, thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my home. I wonder what you'll talk about today. An interesting theme, preserves. Mmm, this reminds me of my granny. So what kind of preserves are there? There are plenty. Jams, jellies, conserves, marmalade, syrups, candies, sauces. You see, you can preserve almost anything. Even meat. Of course, meat, poultry and fish. What's your favourite preserve? I have a strong preference for chilli sauce. On the whole, I find sweet and sour food particularly tempting. I don't really fancy the two flavours together. As they say, differences are the spice of life. Anyway, what are the actual ingredients for chilli sauce? Tomatoes peeled and sliced in chunks, chopped celery, ground onion, green peppers, a cinnamon stick, chilli, mustard, brown sugar and vinegar. That's all. And meat, I suppose. You're right. Mince meat. Mmm. I adore chilli. I'm curious about vegetable canning. What's the right procedure? That's easy. Once you've grasped the basic rules, it's quite simple. All you have to do is heat the food in sealed jars. So simple. Well, you must sterilize containers and lids before canning. Now, this may seem like a stupid question, but heating is important, isn't it? Of course. The heat destroys the bad bacteria, so you can enjoy your preserves all year round. Great. And now, what about canned tomatoes? They used to be popular in summer when I was young. Yes, for this preparation, dip tomatoes in boiling water first. Why? To loosen skin. Dip quickly in cold water, mm -hmm. then peel them. And once peeled, what else? Cut out stem ends and quarter them. And you boil them again, don't you? Right. First you add salt and basil, then pack tomatoes into hot jars. Don't forget to close the lids well. Fantastic. And now, how do you make, let's see, jellies? Oh, I have a pretty good mint jelly recipe. You combine water, vinegar, mint and sugar in a large saucepan and bring to a boil. Then add fruit pectin. How long should it cook? Heat to a full rolling boil and boil hard for one minute. Then what? Just remove the leaves and pour into hot jars. Then seal with paraffin. It's easy. This sounds much easier than I thought. I'll try it. Thank you, Lisa, for your fantastic tips on preserves. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week.
Thank you. You're always welcome in my home. Let's look at the language of the dialogue. A preserve is one of the various methods to store food for a long time, such as canning, drying, bottling, freezing, and so on. Lisa gave examples of food preserves. Jam comes from cooking fruit with sugar. Notice that jam is also used when you're stuck in one place in a traffic jam. Jelly is food made from gelatin. Well, not only food. Even your legs can be wobbly like jelly when you're afraid. Marmalade is jam made from oranges, while conserve is jam containing large pieces of fruit. Syrup is made from fruit pulp, sugar, and water. And candy is fruit cut into small pieces and boiled with sugar and dried. In the U.S., candy means sweets in general. And finally, a sauce is made from fruit or vegetables boiled into a thick liquid. The adjective saucy is used to mean also impertinent person. When you make preserves, make sure you have sterilized jars and check if the lids are well sealed. Canning is also used to mean the same technique but a can is made of metal. Lisa said that sweet and sour is her favorite flavor. This is typical of Chinese cooking, where dishes can be sweet and sharp due to the addition of vinegar. Then, talking about food preparation, Lisa used chop, which means to cut into small pieces or chunks. Slice, that is, cutting into flat pieces. Grind, which means to cut into fine powder, as with coffee and pepper, and quarter, cutting into quarters, for example, an apple or a tomato. Then, regarding boiling, we say bring to a boil, or to a full rolling boil, or boil hard. I finished for today. Look after yourselves. Bye.